So we asked her doctor for help. Rick Zolti is the only FDA-approved medication proven to reduce agitation symptoms that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Rick Zolti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death. Weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing or sleepiness may occur. Take action for your loved one. Ask their doctor about Rick Zulte. This one, shopping pictures. Whoa. The unexpected can happen to any of us. That's why SelectQuote makes it easy to get the life insurance coverage you need to protect your family for less than a dollar a day. SelectQuote found me a $500,000 policy for only $16 a month. We could help you save more than 50% on life insurance. Call us. SelectQuote. We shop. You save. Attention taxpayers, if you or your business owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or have years of unfiled tax returns, you can be hit with wage garnishments, liens, levies. Anthem Tax Services are experts in tax relief and have represented over $650 million in tax liabilities. If we don't save you money or rework your payments, you get your money back guaranteed. Call 800-528-2317. If you're on supplemental oxygen, heavy and awkward tanks are a burden. Now you can leave home and leave the tanks behind with Inogen One, the portable oxygen concentrator you can take almost anywhere. Just press the button here and there's my oxygen. I could play golf again. I could go grocery shopping. I'm free again. I go anywhere with this. Look how small it is. And right now, you can try an Inogen One for 30 days completely risk-free. Your insurance may even cover your new Inogen One system. Call 800-835-1488. Cars will break down, and when they do, it's too late. If your car is out of warranty, it leaves you with two choices. When all you want is everything. What if you found out you've been wrongfully placed on the FBI's no-fly list and couldn't travel within or to the U.S.? One man says it happened to him, leaving him stranded in another country for four years. Washington correspondent Samantha Manning joining us live from D.C. to explain why his case went before the Supreme Court today. Sam? Niku, this is about whether a citizen can sue the government for being wrongfully put on the no-fly list even after the person has already been taken off the list. In the wake of the September 11th terror attacks, the government created the no-fly list. It's a list of people believed to pose a national security risk, and they're stopped from being allowed to board a commercial flight in U.S. airspace. The case now before the U.S. Supreme Court centers on a Muslim American from Oregon who says he was stranded overseas for more than four years, all because he was wrongfully put on the no-fly list. It stemmed from Jonas Fikre's association with a particular mosque. What respondent wants is vindication. Fikre was taken off the no-fly list in 2016, and for that reason, the government argues his lawsuit should now be thrown out. Respondent's no-fly list claims are moot. He's not on the list. He hasn't been on the list in eight years, and he won't be put back on the list in the future based on the currently available information. But attorneys for Fikre argue the government's mistake had long-lasting damage to his life. Mr. Fikre is peaceful, a law-abiding U.S. citizen. And they argue, despite the government's claims it will not put him back on the list, the possibility remains a real threat to Fikre. He doesn't know if the next time he worships at a mosque or travels abroad, he might be relisted, massively disrupting his life once again. And the justices are now weighing the arguments made in court today. We can expect a decision to be handed down by the summer. Live in Washington, D.C., Samantha Manning, Cairo 7 News. All right, thanks, Sam. It's fall 16, and over the weekend, the northeast U.S. was hit with the first snowstorm of the year. Cleanup is underway in Haverhill, Massachusetts, after residents faced more than a foot of snow in the region. It brought power lines down in Connecticut and stranded drivers in New Jersey, and while children enjoy the first sight of flurries in nearly two years. It's like a white miracle. <laughs> it's snow. I'm going to play with the snow with my sisters, and I'm going to build a lot of snowmen. 
Yeah, kids don't have to drive in that, so they are enjoying it. Meanwhile, <laughs> in New York, officials warned residents to get ready for the possibility of widespread flooding tomorrow night. Another storm is on the move and is expected to bring heavy snow, strong winds, potential tornadoes, and serious flooding into the Midwest and to the east. I know you hate the idea of driving in snow. Yeah, I, I actually enjoy that. it. I really do. <laughs> that is just, it well, blows my mind. My, my, yeah. well, originally, until I was nine, from the east coast, and so my parents always taught yeah. me what to do in snow. I don't know. I, mm. I like it. I'm looking forward to the chance. It just depends on what computer model you like the most to see if we're going to find any snow or not. But I'm like, <laughs> fingers crossed, hoping that I don't have to deal with it this week. But yeah, I you think have you're going to have to deal with about. at least some. But here it is at the coast. It's breezy. You can see we have some cloudy conditions in Hansville, and then it's snowing at Stevens and Soquamie. And boy, is it going to be a mess up at the passes for the next couple of days. Snowing in the mountains now. That's not changing at all today, and you can see there's widespread rain. A little bit lighter across Seattle, but you're going to find more rain like this for the rest of the day. In fact, it will get heavier into tonight. Still some pockets of snow or wet snow closer to the Canadian border. I do expect that to mainly turn to rain into the afternoon hours, and so temperatures should be warming up just a bit more. But if you look from 12 until about 5, you just see more rain and more snow in the mountains. But watch this. From 5 until about, say, 10, there's another wave coming through, 10 or 11. And unfortunately, with this one, the wind is also going to kick up. Heavy rain pushes into the Cascades for heavy mountain snow. And then tomorrow, we keep it not only showery with snow in the mountains, but also windy. Here's one example tonight with that front of one computer model projection of, say, 48 miles an hour. It's a little high, but I do think 40 to 45 sounds right around, say, 10 to 11 tonight. And look, just a little bit later, there's one projection putting it at around 50 in Tacoma. So it will get very windy tonight. And then speaking of wind, here's that same time on your wind tracker, and you can see just how strong it is. And then overnight tonight and into tomorrow, it switches direction once the front passes through. And you can see southwesterly wind that is on the windy side area-wide in the morning, peaking tomorrow, probably around, say, Midday, 11 a.m., 12 p.m. till about, say, 3 or 4. And around that time, 40 to 50 mile an hour gusts in the south sound possible, maybe even slightly stronger. Might see 60 in the straight, and you're going to find 40 to 50 for a lot of the area. So the bottom line is it's active. And by the way, that's just the snow in the mountains without even mentioning the blizzard warning and the wind. Because with that wind, we're also going to see a blizzard warning that we're going to talk specifically about that's in effect for tomorrow. And oh yeah, beyond the showers and the chance for a little bit of wet snow here and there, Thursday into Friday, look at the temperature drop. Look at that chance for snow, Friday being your best bet. Oh, no. And even some possible <laughs> into Saturday. So, again, we're going to look specifically at that blizzard warning and pretty much just the seven days so we can talk wow. about the cold air because we had wind and all that going on now. Yeah. I had to talk about all that first, but we got plenty to talk about. I have never, in the almost two years I've been here, seen you only focus on the seven days. So that's when you know it's an active, There's active weather happening. week. All right, thanks, Nick. 12, 20, and coming up, the Red Cross is sounding the alarm for an emergency blood shortage across the U.S. Their plea to get hospitals the supplies they need. And the Golden Globes had the spotlight last night as many of last year's TV favorites took the stage. How one local actress is making history. Coming up on primetime here on CBS at 7.30, Entertainment Tonight, followed by NCIS at 8. Watch Cairo 7 Tonight at 11. Followed up with The Late Show with Stephen Colbert at 11.35. Magical moments. Snowy adventures. Warming up. Making memories. A winter wonderland. The perfect close by getaway this winter is Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Find countless ways to play and plan your escape at cdawinter.com. My mom's Alzheimer's never changed how much we love her, but it did change her. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. She started yelling, pacing around, kept repeating the same questions. She got agitated often, so we asked her doctor for help. Rick Zolte is the only FDA-approved medication proven to reduce agitation symptoms that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Rick Zolte can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death. 
weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing or sleepiness may occur. Take action for your loved one. Ask their doctor about Rexulti. This one shopping for drinks. Whoa. The unexpected can happen to any of us. That's why SelectQuote makes it easy to get the life insurance coverage you need to protect your family for less than a dollar a day. SelectQuote found me a $500,000 policy for only $16 a month. We could help you save more than 50% on life insurance. Or call us. Select quote. We shop. You save. Attention taxpayers, if you or your business owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or have years of unfiled tax returns, you can be hit with wage garnishments, liens, levies. Anthem Tax Services are experts in tax relief and have represented over $650 million in tax liabilities. If we don't save you money or rework your payments, you get your money back guaranteed. Call 800-528-2317. If you're on supplemental oxygen, heavy and awkward tanks are a burden. Now you can leave home and leave the tanks behind with Inogen One, the portable oxygen concentrator you can take almost anywhere. Just press the button here and there's my oxygen. I could play golf again. I could go grocery shopping. I'm free again. I go anywhere with this. Look how small it is. And right now, you can try an Inogen One for 30 days completely risk-free. Your insurance may even cover your new Inogen One system. Call 800-835-1488. Call the number on your screen. Well, it was a big night for Oppenheimer, Succession, and The Bear at the 81st Golden Globe Awards, hosted by comedian and actor Joe Coy. Coy was raised right here in Tacoma, and he wasn't the only Washingtonian in the spotlight. CBS News correspondent Dania Backus has all the highlights from the big night, including local actress Lily Gladstone making history. Oppenheimer! Oppenheimer dominated the Golden Globes, winning five awards, including Best Drama, Best Actor for Killian Murphy, Best Supporting Actor for Robert Downey Jr., and Best Director for Christopher Nolan. We bring people together and we try and get them to give them their best. The top comedy musical film prize went to Poor Things, for which Emma Stone also nabbed the Best Actress in a Comedy or Musical Award. I love getting to say this dialogue. The holdovers Paul Giamatti and Divine Joy Randolph won awards for Best Actor in a Comedy or Musical and Best Supporting Actress, while Indigenous actress Lily Gladstone made history for Killers of the Flower Moon. I love everyone in this room right now. On the television side, Hulu's The Bear dominated the comedic categories with wins for Best Actor Jeremy Allen White, Best Actress Aoi Debris, and Best Television Comedy Series. Thank you to the entire restaurant community. HBO Succession took top television drama as well as acting awards for Kieran Culkin, Sarah Snook, and supporting actor Matthew McFadden. Beef nabbed the Best Limited TV Series prize. Danya Back is CBS News, Beverly Hills. Well, more people are carrying monthly credit card balances and they're in debt for longer. That's according to a new survey from Bankrate. It reveals about 56 million people have been in debt for at least a year. The most common reasons people go into debt are emergencies and daily expenses. The survey also shows less than half of cardholders have a plan for paying it off. Financial analysts recommend getting a 0% balance transfer card. And if you have a lot of debt or a low credit score, experts also suggest working with a nonprofit credit counseling agencies. Let's take a live look at the big board on Wall Street right now, where it looks like the Dow is up 156 points. And a quick look at some local stocks, Amazon, Microsoft, and Starbucks. They are all in the green, all up right now. Well, it's 1226 and still ahead. We're in the midst of a national emergency. Why a blood shortage could force life or death choices for doctors. And a terrifying incident in the sky has forced over 100 Boeing jets to be grounded. How this is already impacting flights this My mom's Alzheimer's never changed how much we love her, but it did change her. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. She started yelling pacing around, kept repeating the same questions. She got agitated often, so we asked her doctor for help. 
Rick Zolti is the only FDA-approved medication proven to reduce agitation symptoms that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Rick Zolti can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death. Weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, falls, seizures, trouble swallowing or sleepiness may occur. Take action for your loved one. Ask their doctor about Rick Zulti. This one, shopping for drinks. Whoa. The unexpected can happen to any of us. That's why SelectQuote makes it easy to get the life insurance coverage you need to protect your family for less than a dollar a day. SelectQuote found me a $500,000 policy for only $16 a month. We could help you save more than 50% on life insurance. Or call us. SelectQuote. We shop. You save. Attention taxpayers, if you or your business owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or have years of unfiled tax returns, you can be hit with wage garnishments, liens, levies. Anthem Tax Services are experts in tax relief and have represented over $650 million in tax liabilities. If we don't save you money or rework your payments, you get your money back guaranteed. Call 800-528-2317. If you're on supplemental oxygen, heavy and awkward tanks are a burden. Now you can leave home and leave the tanks behind with Inogen One, the portable oxygen concentrator you can take almost anywhere. Just press the button here and there's my oxygen. I could play golf again. I could go grocery shopping. I'm free again. I go anywhere with this. Look how small it is. And right now, you can try an Inogen One for 30 days completely risk-free. Your insurance may even cover your new Inogen One system. Call 800-835-1488. Cars will break down. And when they do, it's too late. If your car is out of warranty, it leaves you with two choices. The one to call. Now on Cairo 7 News. Well, you are taking a live look at SEA as they continue to deal with the aftermath of over 100 Boeing planes being grounded. This comes after a terrifying incident with Alaska Airlines when a door plug blew off midair in Portland, Oregon. Pilots have reported pressurization warnings three times in the last month. And as CBS's Chris Van Cleve reports, it's not the first snag for Boeing 737 MAX 9. Our first look at the crippled Alaska Airlines 737 MAX 9. Investigators say damage like this mangled seat has been found in nearly every row. Nicholas Hoke was on the flight Friday night. A loud boom or almost like a mini explosion um, happens abruptly. It was a 63-pound piece of the plane known as a plug door blowing out at 16,000 feet, leaving a gaping hole forcing the 171 passengers and six crew to don oxygen masks. In Alaska, uh, triple to a declared emergency. We're descending down to 10,000, and we need to return back to Portland. Saturday, the FAA grounded all 737 MAX 9s in the U.S., 171 of them for further inspections. Boeing says it fully supports that decision, and safety is our top priority. In March 2019, the MAX was grounded for 619 days after two deadly crashes linked to a design flaw in the plane's flight control systems killed 346. The plane is still here at the Portland airport. It's been pulled over by a hangar where investigators have been working. You can see where that plug door is missing. The door was found late Sunday night. NTSB chair Jennifer Homendy. What happens if it had been at cruise altitude? At cruise al altitude? Uh, we could have lost the aircraft. At that point, the pressure differential is so great that the explosion would have been extremely violent, extremely. The plane is just weeks old. The NTSB says when that piece blew out, it did so with so much force, it ripped open the locked fortified cockpit door 26 rows away. Boeing is planning a safety summit on Tuesday, stemming from this incident. Chris Van Cleve, CBS News, Portland.
wow, just terrifying. Well, it's 1232 and we have meteorologist Nick Aller joining us now. Nick, you have a pretty intense week ahead in the weather world. Lots happening, lots of rain, lots of snow in the mountains, some increasing wind and that chance for snow in the lowlands and a lot of cold air. Potentially all of this is, is happening in one week, like you said, Nico. And right now it's raining out at the airport at 40 degrees in Seattle. You still have rain pretty much area wide, except for some lighter stuff right now in southeast Pierce County. We're generally going to see rain for a lot of the day with a bit of a break, say late heading into tonight before it gets heavy again. And we still have some pockets where you're seeing maybe a little bit of wet snow closer to Bellingham and closer to the Canadian border. That should mix out to rain as the afternoon wears on. However, we are looking at a lot of snow in the mountains. A winter storm warning in effect until it, tomorrow morning, although that might end up changing for tonight, but we're looking at around, say, 6 to 15 inches for the first round, but a total through Wednesday of yeah, probably in that one to four foot range, but probably more like, you know, two to three, two to four overall for the passes and even more for paradise and for areas higher up. And then how about this one with that snow in the mountains and the increasing wind we're going to feel for tonight and throughout the day tomorrow. We have our first blizzard warning since 2012, and that means sustained wind at 35 miles per hour or higher, or at least frequent gusts around the same with visibility for three hours at around a quarter of a mile or less. And that again is in effect for tomorrow, but I am watching some increasing wind for tonight that may give you blizzard like conditions for tonight as well. So we're going to look at very active weather. All of that to say, yes, we have that for today. We have that for tomorrow with a lot of wind and then we have to see our temperatures fall into the 20s and talk about that lowland snow chance. We'll look specifically at that with our latest computer model data coming up in a little more than 10 minutes. Okay, thanks Nick. Well, if you're looking to watch today's big game with your fellow Husky fans, the Seattle Center Armory has just announced a free watch party. There will be food vendors, a beer garden and more. It gets underway this afternoon at 430 and that's just one of many local watch parties. Red Hook Brew Lab in Capitol Hill is also hosting one with tickets at $25 pre-sale or $30 at the door. Queen Anne Beer Hall is also planning for a full house and the same is expected for their new sister property in Kirkland called Moss Bay Hall. And if you're looking for something slightly different, you can catch the game on the big screen too. AMC and Regal in Seattle, Regal in Everett and the Grand Cinema in Tacoma are all showing the game. The cost is about 20 bucks per person and kickoff is at 430 this afternoon. And we now know the date Mulbacks in Woodenville is set to close. It's happening January 28th. A going out of business sale is underway right now. Mulbacks first confirmed it would shut down last month. It said there was no way forward after a decade old redevelopment plan with green partners collapsed. That real estate group said that they stopped the project due to rising construction costs and rising interest rates. Mulbax has been a Woodenville staple for 67 years. Well, every drop saves a life. That's according to the American Red Cross. It says the national blood supply is at critically low levels, so much so that they're declaring an emergency. Donors are needed now more than ever. The Red Cross says the number of donors is at a 20 year low and with the loss of 300,000 donors since the COVID-19 pandemic. With emptier shelves, hospitals could have to make excruciating decisions. Doctors have to make choices about which patients can receive a transfusion in a given day. Surgeries like heart surgeries can be delayed waiting for the available blood to be collected and sent to the hospital. The Red Cross supplies about 40% of the blood in the U.S. and says while all types of blood donations are needed, type O and platelets are most urgently needed. And we're also learning new details today about Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin's hospitalization at Walter Reed National Military Medical Center. He was secretly admitted last week for three days. Even President Biden didn't know that Austin was in intensive care. Natalie Brand reports from Washington. Defense Secretary Lloyd Austin is said to be recovering well and in good spirits, but both Democrats and Republicans are expressing concern about the lack of transparency surrounding his hospitalization at Walter Reed. The Pentagon says Austin had an elective medical procedure on December 22nd and went home one day later. Then on New Year's Day, Austin started experiencing severe pain and was admitted to the intensive care unit. 
The next day, Austin transferred certain operational duties to his deputy, Kathleen Hicks, but she was not informed of his hospitalization until January 4th. The White House's chief of staff and national security advisor were not briefed until that day either. A defense official tells CBS News that the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General C.Q. Brown, was informed that Austin was in the hospital on January 2nd. But Brown, who is President Biden's principal military advisor, did not inform the White House. As questions about the timeline swirl, a White House official confirmed to CBS News the president is not considering firing Austin over the incident. Fellow cabinet members also expressed their support. I'm very much looking forward to seeing him fully uh, recovered and um, working side by side uh, in the year ahead. In a statement, Secretary Austin said, I take full responsibility for my decisions about disclosure and committed to doing better. Natalie Brand, CBS News, Washington. A salmonella outbreak is hitting Washington state and it's linked to something you may be planning to serve at your next gathering. More than 11,000 pounds of charcuterie meat products are being recalled by Buceto Foods. The tainted item includes samplers with prosciutto and dry copa. 24 cases of salmonella are under investigation in 14 states, including some cases in Washington. Well, Israel says it has wrapped up major combat in northern Gaza and dismantled the military infrastructure for Hamas there. Israeli forces are now trading shots with militants across the border. And as Secretary of State Anthony Blinken visits Israel, CBS's Tina Cross reports. As Israeli troops fight Hamas militants in central and southern Gaza, Israel released new video showing strikes against Hezbollah militants who've unleashed rockets into northern Israel from Lebanon. A high-level Hezbollah commander was killed on Monday. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu rallied his troops at the border, promising to do whatever it takes to restore Israel's security. As cross-border battles intensify, U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken is in the Middle East pushing for diplomacy. This is a conflict that could easily metastasize, causing even more insecurity and even more suffering. He shuttled between capitals in the region, meeting with Arab leaders ahead of talks on Tuesday in Israel. In Gaza, there's pain for Palestinian civilians, trapped in escalating violence as Israel vows to destroy Hamas. An Israeli airstrike near Rafah over the weekend killed two journalists, including the son of Al Jazeera's chief Gaza correspondent. Three months into the war, heartbroken families of missing hostages left a long trail of empty shoes in Tel Aviv. This is my shout to the world to bring them home. More than 130 people, including Americans, are still believed to be held underground. Tina Kraus, CBS News, London. Still ahead, a decision came down from the state Supreme Court on a longtime case against Washington State University. We're breaking down what that means for the school. And a historic launch to the moon couldn't have been done without the help of a few local companies. What scientists are planning to get humans back and this gentleman here is Walter Zaney. So he started Greenwood? Back in 1918. Wait, you're named after the founder. Sitting next to him is my great-great-great-grandpup, Baxter. No way. Is that a Lennox tore its own furnace? Proudly installed by Greenwood, of course. Man, a lot sure has changed over the years. With technology, sure, but we've never strayed from our commitment to providing you with a more comfortable home. My mom's Alzheimer's never changed how much we love her, but it did change her. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. She started yelling, pacing around, kept repeating the same questions. She got agitated often, so we asked her doctor for help. Rick Zolte is the only FDA-approved medication proven to reduce agitation symptoms that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease. Rick Zolte can cause serious side effects. Elderly dementia patients have increased risk of death or stroke. Report fever, stiff muscles, and confusion, which can be life-threatening, or uncontrolled muscle movements, which may be permanent. High blood sugar, which can lead to coma or death. Weight gain, increased cholesterol, low white blood cells, unusual urges, dizziness on standing, 
falls, seizures, trouble swallowing, or sleepiness may occur. Take action for your loved one. Ask their doctor about Rexulti. Every day when I first come to work, I see your emails and I listen to your voicemails of people getting ripped off. That makes me mad. Then comes the fun part. No one's talked to him. What's up? I'm so grateful to you guys. You've helped a lot. What we want to do is try to get some type of change. Our job is to get results one way or the other. That's why I push for solutions. I push for answers. And I push to hold people accountable. That's why Cairo 7 investigates. I guess I'm shopping for drinks. Whoa. The unexpected can happen to any of us. That's why SelectQuote makes it easy to get the life insurance coverage you need to protect your family for less than a dollar a day. SelectQuote found me a $500,000 policy for only $16 a month. We could help you save more than 50% on life insurance. Or call us. SelectQuote. We shop. You save. Attention taxpayers, if you or your business owe more than $10,000 to the IRS or have years of unfiled tax returns, you can be hit with wage garnishments, liens, levies. Anthem Tax Services are experts in tax relief and have represented over $650 million in tax liabilities. If we don't save you money or rework your payments, you get your money back guaranteed. Call 800-528-2317. Washington State ferries continue to face rough waters. Officials now say they won't see the situation change for at least four more years. This year's new service contingency plan says until they can finally get new ferries, normal service just is impossible. Apparently there are ferries that need repairs, plus the agency is dealing with ongoing crew shortages. It says the original goal to returning to normal scheduling this fall isn't possible. The earliest officials expect new ferries to come in is 2028. And it will be windy on the ferries oh, over yeah. the next 24 hours. I mean, it gets windy tonight late, and then it will be windy, especially throughout the day tomorrow. In fact, around this time tomorrow, we'll be entering into the, the beginning of the peak of the strongest wind. We talked about that a few minutes ago with rain out there now. There'll be a heavier band that comes in late tonight around 10 or 11, and the wind does pick up with that. Remember, I showed you in that 40 to 45, maybe slightly higher range late tonight. And with with that, you might start to see some blizzard like conditions in the mountain passes, but the blizzard warning, at least right now, officially takes effect tomorrow morning for the Cascades. But you can see rain out there. We have had some pockets of wet snow closer to Blaine, Bellingham, Ferndale, and right now we're seeing mainly just light to moderate rain with a few breaks out there. The overall picture is yes, we have that rain, we have mountain snow, and then it becomes windy for tonight. And area wide, it's windy for tomorrow, and the peak tomorrow of the strongest wind that could be in the 50 plus range south of Seattle, maybe near 50 around Seattle, but even stronger in the straight for the coast. That's going to be around, say, noon, well, even around 11, but 11, 12 till about 3 or 4 with blizzard-like conditions in the Cascades. And then potentially very cold later this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and some lowland snow is possible. So let me spend some time on this. We have rain in the mix today, getting especially heavy for tonight. And like I said, it gets windy tonight as well. If you're traveling over the passes at all, I mean, it's not the not the best thing to do if you can avoid it. Really, if you can, that would be smart because, like I said, it will be windy tomorrow and even late tonight. So area wide is going to be a whole mess tomorrow with wind and snow in the Cascades. And we'll see at least tomorrow, not as consistent rain for the lowlands, but still showers. It'll be, you know, on and off throughout the entire day. Wednesday, there could be a few pockets with some wet snow, but mostly it's just decreasing showers. And then Thursday, from the Fraser River Canyon, we're going to start to get some increasing northeast wind, and that might actually produce a little convergent zone over, say, like, you know, Port Townsend to Everett, give or take, and that could produce some pockets of snow later Thursday. And right now, depending on which computer model you look at, if you're looking at the European model, it puts all sorts of snow like Shehala South. If you're looking at the model I look at a lot from the UW, it puts a lot of snow in the lowlands on Friday. I think Friday, number one, is going to be very cold. But number two has the potential to be our snowy day with some lingering snow showers into Saturday, depending on the model, quite a bit or not at all. And then a few still around for Sunday. But look at those daytime highs. If anything, those might get colder. 
in the upper 20s. So I would say watch out for later this week around Friday as maybe the mm -hmm. snowiest day mm -hmm. for at least accumulating snow that could be into Saturday. But you know, we have to watch which computer model gets it right because some are yeah. saying none. Some are saying a lot. It's just a gamble, I guess. Yeah, we just have to wait till it gets closer. I think they'll yeah. start to come into agreement here soon. Okay, well, thanks, Nick. 1247 and the Washington Supreme Court determined Washington State University is not to blame for an off campus rape involving two students in August of 2017. The split decision came down last week surrounding a student who went to WSU Vancouver and had two sexual assault violations filed against him. He transferred to WSU Pullman, where he proceeded to rape an intoxicated student at a party. He's since been convicted for second degree rape. The case argued the school was culpable, but in a 5-2 ruling, the court decided WSU is not. They said the school has a responsibility to protect students from foreseeable injury at the hands of other students, but went on to say that their responsibility lies only on campus. And liftoff of the first United Launch Alliance Vulcan rocket, launching a new era in spaceflight to the moon and beyond. That is incredible. The first U.S. lunar lander in more than 50 years is on its way to the moon. Several Washington state companies had a part in this morning's launch of the brand new Vulcan rocket. Its main mission is to pave the way for the return of NASA astronauts to the moon. Super exciting to know that now our Peregrine 1 lander is on its way to the moon and in about two and a half weeks it's going to go into orbit. And a few weeks later from that, in uh, mid to late February, we're going to actually see it land. Our payloads are going to be studying things, including studying water, studying the volatiles or the, the resources on the moon, and also the radiation environment to help inform us uh, for the future when we have humans back on the moon. The rocket is also carrying a payload of human DNA samples, including ashes provided by families. Remains of Star Trek actors Nichelle Nichols, James Doohan, and DeForest Kelly are on their way to this final frontier. And at the end of a long day, a lot of us are looking for a way to relax. In today's Local Steals and Deals, Shannon Lanier has found what he says is the ultimate massager. Have you ever had a long day at work and the only thing you want to do is go home and get a foot massage? That's me all the time. But unfortunately, my wife does not like rubbing my feet. She's like, nope, not going to do it. <laughs> so I had to go out and find the Footopia, and now I'm telling y'all about it because this thing acts as my wife's sister wife and does all the massaging and she doesn't have to do anything. So it's a win-win because I can get my feet rubbed. <laughs> this thing is amazing because it has the only massager that has a shiatsu massaging technique. It has kneading. It has rolling in two different directions and it also has three heat settings so it can warm your feet on those cold days and you still get your feet rubbed. It's also very portable. You can take it around to the office on vacation. All you need is a plug, plug it in, and you are ready to go. So especially if you're going to do a lot of walking, whether you're in a marathon or going to an amusement park, this is great to loosen up those muscles, and it really gets in there. Those settings can be changed, but you really massages those knots out of your feet so you feel relaxed and relieved after you had this massage working. So if you have a demanding job, if you work a lot, if you walk a lot, or just want your feet rubbed because it feels good, avoid those expensive spas and get this 33% off right now at locustdeals.com. Coming up, a new craze sweeping the country. These cups are the hot ticket item. Find out how much they sold at Stan Stanley's and how much they're costing online. Here's a look at Cairo 7's afternoon lineup. At 1, The Talk, 2, The Bold and the Beautiful, 2.30, Washington Grown, 3, Dr. Phil, and then watch Cairo 7 News live. My mom's Alzheimer's never changed how much we love her, but it did change her. She developed agitation that may happen with dementia due to Alzheimer's disease.